you shouldn't buy a RTX 4060 Ti and you shouldn't build a RTX 3060 Ti budget build. However, if you're gonna do it regardless because of reasons such as the RTX 3000 is gonna get old in the coming years, so those will be one of the few cars to be, to be found used to be in good conditions and actually a good buy, you might as well do it well. So here we are with a budget build coming in under the 500 euros budget point with a RTX 4060 Ti and a Ryzen 7 which will play any game at 1080p high settings. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so at the core of today's video is the RTX 4060 Ti. Now this card, brand new, the 8 gigabyte model, is gonna set you back just a little bit under 400 euros. However, today we managed to pick it up for 300 bucks and this one is brand new. It was actually opened but never used, so it's a very good deal. However, the rest of the components are used, so let's go over them. Now the combo power in this whole thing is this B550 Plus Prime from ASUS with a Ryzen 7 5800X coupled with 30GB of DDR4 RAM. Now I was able to buy this old combo for just 200 bucks and surprised to say but yes the cooler, the case and the power supply I actually got for free and no I'm not cheating because if you take a look at the other videos of my other budget bills what happened was in the other budget bills we bought a whole PC and then we just took out the motherboard, CPU and RAM combo leaving the rest. So we are reutilizing the rest in today's build and we already counted the whole price in the other build which we sold for a profit. So these are effectively free. However, since not everybody is a PC flipper, not everybody can have endless hardware to get this for free, here is how you can get this combo for yourself for this price. Pretty simple. So this case is the Sharkoon TG6 Mesh. It's a bad case, jokes aside. It performs well, but it doesn't look the best. There are better options out there which are cheaper and you can buy today on Amazon. Many of which I have covered in my videos in the past, but a few brands I feel like recommending are Mars Gaming, iTech and Sahara Gaming. They are the best in terms of budget cases. And if you wanna pick one of them, it's gonna be around 30 bucks to 50 bucks, depending on how good you want it, okay? Power supply, you can buy it used for around 30 bucks. And now let's go over the first point of why the RTX 4060 Ti can actually make sense for many people. Main reason is this card is the most power efficient card out there. It literally doesn't draw power. It has a single 8 pin connector and can be powered easily by a 450 watt power supply, even with a Ryzen 7. So you can just buy the cheapest power supply you can find out there and it's gonna run perfectly with this card, especially if I undervolt it as shown in my tutorial. But let's not spoil too much about the performance. You can then get a one terabyte SSD for 30 bucks, readily available online, NVMEs are cheap, RAM is cheap, cooler, you don't need a cooler, you can just use the stock cooler because Ryzen CPUs are, excuse me, let me correct myself, because 5000 series Ryzen CPUs are actually pretty good with the stock cooler. 7000, not as much. So you can just use a stock cooler and undervolt the CPU as well. Again, I have a tutorial for it and you will be able to use that so you can save some money there as well. And if you actually count everything up, we have finished the components. So without further ado, I say we build it, play some games and talk about further about why this is a very good build, okay? So let's get into it. Now today's build up process is gonna be relatively simple because as you can see the motherboard is already fully populated because I tested it out of the case something that every single one of you should be doing and that I often don't do it because I am a bad example but yes we already tested that everything is working and now we're just assembling the actual computer in the case so we slot the motherboard in and now we go ahead and screw it into place Time to actually put in the GPU. I think it's a perfect match color-wise for the build. Let's go straight ahead. Power supply, super simple. Whoop. 
I say it's time for a first boot. Let's see if we get a signal. Again, we already have Windows installed, so if it boots, it should boot straight into Windows. Let's see. Okay, we're into the BIOS, that's good. Uh, it's giving us an error message in Windows, but it's basically working. So, success, time to test it. Well, we had to run a quick BIOS update and to get everything finalized, but here we are with the PC fully finished and tested. Now let's go over the synthetic tests first, then the ease of use, then the games for last. I know you wanna see the games. Now CPU-Z, pretty easy. We've covered quite a bit of AM4 CPUs. Four cheap computers, they are the best value for money. 650 in single thread, very impressive for the multi-thread as well. Just overall, great. We tested the CPU temperature in Prime 95 as well. It reaches eight degrees at maximum with a very, very, very quiet fan curve. GPU, really the coolest GPU I've tried so far, reaching just a peak of 58 degrees with stock settings. Not even undervolted guys, 58 degrees on the core. Extremely quiet. I couldn't even hear the fans running. Really happy about it. Run a quick fire strike. We did 30K, 35K in graphics. Extremely impressed with it. This card is not actually that bad. I'm gonna say it, it's not that bad. It, it received very bad press, mostly because of the price point, but I think this video will be especially useful in like half a year from now to a year, when you will be able to find these cards used for a good price. And for a good price, you definitely should actually buy the RTX 4060 Ti. So yes, the title should have been, you shouldn't buy a brand new RTX 4060 Ti, but in today's market, at the 300 euros mark, which is what I paid for it, it actually is already justifiable because you're getting a brand new card with warranty, lightly used, you're sure it wasn't used for mining. So genuinely, even today, it might be a good buy at the right price, to be honest, but it will definitely be tomorrow once you will be able to find it used for a good price. So I'm really happy about it. Now the rest of the build, the Sharkoon TG5 mesh, sorry, the Sharkoon TG6 mesh, I forgot because it's basically the same case, is good. The mesh front panel helps a lot and keeps everything cool and quiet, even with the side panel closed. And it looks kind of nice, but you have to be the judge of that one. So, games. How does this GPU perform? Well, you've actually, I bet all of you have seen uh, the full review at launch. This card basically performs like an RTX 3060 Ti from the previous gen in most games. In some games, especially at higher res, it reaches an RTX 3070. Some, the performance difference is negligible with the RTX 3070 Ti as well. This card will allow you to play close to 240 FPS in most competitive titles, Fortnite on low for sure, as we've tested. Apex, it's a bit trickier, but you can do over 200. Warzone, you can max out the 144 FPS mark. It's tricky to get over that in Warzone with this card, to be honest. Single player games, well, even with higher details, you can stay at 60 FPS mark easily. Starfield has gotten an update as well, so even that one is gonna be fine. Being an RTX 4000 card, it will support frame gen and all that good stuff, so it's nice. So, all in all, very good PC, even at stock, temps are great. Honestly, no need to undervolt this time, but we still undervolted it. We saved a combined of 100 watts on it. Again, we have an 80 plus gold PSU here from Corsair, so we went a bit overkill there. Again, check out my undervolted tutorials if you wanna do it on your PC as well. And please drop a like and subscribe and check out my other builds as well if you want to see what I can do with a bigger budget or with older hardware. We have quite a bit of stuff on the channel. And see you in the next one, guys. Bye.